and welcome to session three of Artificial Intelligence. In this session, we're going to be talking about decision trees, random forests, and evolutionary algorithms. So let's start off by talking about decision trees, right? Um, and we're going to use that telemarketing example from before. So we have a bunch of features describing a set of banking customers, and we're trying to determine who to target with a new offer via telemarketing. Um, our dependent variable target feature is Y, as we described before, which is, did the customer subscribe for a term deposit? We know a bit about the consumers, but let us limit what we're going to talk about today is to age, duration of the last interaction, month of last interaction, and previous outcome of the marketing campaign, right? Um, the rule is a basic unit of all classification, and we've talked about this before when we talked about the antecedents of uh, uh, consequence and support and lift and all that and you know you could have a very naive rules which say things like assign a category back based on exact previous data seen that's similar to key nearest neighbors right where we say we're going to try and match the individual that's close um and, and in fact key nearest neighbors is a different one where you assign it based upon the average right but some of the problems with those rules right uh, you can't assign a category based upon the exact previous data seen if you've never seen this particular set of day before. And as we saw before, K nearest neighbors doesn't work very well in a lot of these situations. So you could have more informed rules, right? You could study the data and try and group it. And you could look at the fact that if the duration of the last call was greater than 600, then they're going to respond. If their age is over 40, then they're more likely to respond. And you might remember some of that from our data exploration, right? If the month equals December, then they're not going to respond positively. And if the previous outcome was a success, then they may respond positively this time. And you could have more complex rules, right? If the age is greater than 40 and duration is greater than 600, then yes, they will respond. And if the month is equal to December and the previous outcome was a success, then yes, they will, will uh, respond positively. And this could help you decide who to target with this particular offer, right? But you know, these are all kind of, this would take a lot of effort for you to manually look through all those rules and what, and kind of put them all together. And eventually you'd probably wind up with some sort of like tree of rules, right? Where if the age is greater than 40 and the duration is greater than 600, then yes, else no. If the month equals December and the previous outcome equals yes, then, then they were gonna respond yes, else equals no, right? And you can start to put this together into a nice diagram right, that explains how all these values, so the way you read these diagrams, right, is that duration greater than 600 means you check the age, and if the age is greater than 40, then you get a yes, if it's less than 40, you get a no, if the duration is, be, you know, is under 100, then it's just no, if it's between 100 and 200, then it's yes, if it's between 200 and 600, then you look at the previous outcome, if that was a success, then you're going to predict sex, otherwise, you're going to predict a failure of no, right, and so these, these trees are really, really helpful for describing data and they allow you to break it up into kind of cool nonlinear ways. And one of the great aspects of them is that they're completely interpretable by someone who has, that has no idea how machine learning works, right? But the question then becomes, how do we actually do this automatically? Well, to do that, you're gonna to need to know additional information. You need to know what additional information each decision point gives to you, right? And so for that, we're gonna to have to quantify the information that that decision point generates. If we can do that, then we can figure out what's called the entropy of the data and we can try and decrease that entropy over time, allowing us to make better and better predictions. In other words, if you look back at this graph, kind of one way to intuitively think about this is that when we first start looking at a new customer and we're deciding whether or not to target them, we don't really know whether we should. It's kind of a random coin flip. But then we know from past experience that if their duration is greater than 600, that provides us with some information and reduces our entropy or our uncertainty about that individual, right? And so then we can go to this block. And from previous data, we also know that if we know their age, that gives us additional information, right? It reduces our uncertainty. It reduces the entropy in the system. And eventually we get down to a single point where that's the best decision we can make with the current data we've seen so far. In other words, we've reached the minimal amount, amount of entropy and we've maximized the information we have about that individual, 
given similar individuals that we've observed in the past. And that's really the goal of a decision tree algorithm. Uh, and we're going to describe, describe how to do that specifically in the next 